Well, for the past 25 years, we've been trying to figure out a way clinically to address whether lowering inflammation per se will lower cardiac event rates. We showed many years ago that markers of inflammation predict risk, and then we showed that statin drugs lower both inflammation and cholesterol. Then we did our very large-scale Jupiter trial, 18,000 patients around the world, showing that if you select people because they have a high inflammatory burden and then give them a cholesterol-lowering drug, they have far fewer event rates. But that trial looked at a lipid-lowering drug that has anti-inflammatory effects. So the next stage has been, can we focus down to agents that have pure anti-inflammatory effects that do not affect cholesterol at all? So we have two trials that are ongoing, one funded by the United States uh, National Heart, Lung, and Blood Institute that's looking at a very commonly used drug, uh, methotrexate, that millions of people take to treat their rheumatoid arthritis. It's a standard of treatment for rheumatoid arthritis throughout the world. That drug happens to lower event rates in people with rheumatoid arthritis. So the question now becomes, can we, in people who don't have obvious inflammation, do that? So that's the cardiovascular inflammation reduction trial and it takes post-myocardial infarction patients and randomly allocates them to aggressive care plus placebo or aggressive care plus this upstream anti-inflammatory drug. Now while that's an exciting trial, it's using a diffuse, broad-spectrum anti-inflammatory. So we also wanted a second swing at the bat, if you like, to look at a narrowly targeted piece of the puzzle that has to do with interleukin-1 beta. Interleukin-1 is the primary cytokine. It sits upstream from IL-6. IL-6, of course, triggers the liver to put out CRP. So we think this is a very focused way of looking at the question. That drug is canakinumab, which is manufactured by Novartis. It's in use for some very rare genetic disorders. What we're doing with colleagues around the world, we already have more than 10,000 patients randomized to this drug or to placebo who've already had a heart attack and are already on high-dose statins. It's a very exciting time for this field. <laughs> Some of the challenges we face are intellectual. Uh, as internists, as cardiologists, we have grown up with the lipid hypothesis. And this is not about the lipid hypothesis directly. We know that lowering cholesterol profoundly lowers event rates. The question is, is the residual risk our patients have driven only by cholesterol, or is it also driven by this inflammatory response? Now, we have published, and many people have corroborated for many years, that once you're on a statin, the on-treatment level of CRP is just as important as the on-treatment level of LDL cholesterol, and driving them both down further benefits our patients. But right now, we don't have agents that have proven to do that for the inflammation part, but we do on the lipid part. So one of the biggest challenges we have is educating our physicians. And how do we express to people that this residual inflammatory piece may be just as important as the cholesterol part? So that's been the biggest challenge, really. The first of these trials that we'll complete is the canakinumab trial, CANTOS. Uh, it's an event-driven trial. Uh, it needs 1,400 events at the point it will have power to stop, and we're about two-thirds of the way there already. So I would think within about two years or so, we'll have a readout for the very first of these. That'll be a very exciting time, and we'll learn, does lowering inflammation lower vascular risk?